You ready? Breakfast with Bob and Paul. Welcome again to 2013 Ironman World Championship Breakfast with Bob and Paul. We are presented by Monster Eye Sport, the athlete's headphones. We're beautiful huggos, and we are live on triathlete.com. And Poncho Man, thank you so much for bringing us in. Our next guest, one of the best pure cyclists in the sport of triathlon, Mr. Andrew Starkowitz. 40439 huddle at Ironman Florida. I am so sorry, but he had to have been on a scooter motor, or a okay. motorcycle. Yeah, Harley they, Davidson. Yeah, what those that's, frames? You're an engineer. You figured out how to put a motor. Or was in it there. that Fabian Cancellara thing with the yeah. engine in the frame? <laughs> I mean, that's that's ridiculous. He, he how fast a, is that average had, speed? He had a prototype. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I had the actual thing. He had <laughs> nice. the prototype. What, what's the average speed that that I, 404? I don't have a speedometer. I mean, everybody really? talks about this, how fast you're going. I'm, I have no idea. I mean. The only time you really realize that you're a little going closer with this guy. The only time you really realize you're going fast is when you look out of the side of your eye and you watch that side speed stuff fly by. <laughs> Other than that, I mean, you're just looking at the yellow, or the yellow or white line on the road, just yeah. following it, and I go where it goes. So. It, it doesn't remind you of Ferris Al Solstein. Yeah. When Ferris won in 2005, he goes, "I just like chasing the helicopter." Yeah, I just wanted. It's like the he doesn't understand that the helicopter's following him. <laughs> that he's not. Chasing, chasing it. it. Yeah, it's on its own. Well, I'll try that this weekend. Okay. So, Andrew, uh, as, as somebody who obviously is a bright young man, uh, going to Purdue and having an engineering degree, what got you into being a professional triathlete? Just, I just enjoyed racing. I, I picked up a hobby in college and yeah. just trained for it. And at first, your goal is to do better each right. time you improve and then it's to win your age group and I was chasing a guy at the time Michael Bamer and I just kept chasing him chasing him he would keep beating me I think I finished second to him in a race like 13 or 14 times in the course of 45 years and I just kept getting better and better I just didn't realize that I always thought I was just uh, just trying to be the big fish in the small pond and then Michael won uh, I think duathlon worlds yeah and you realize and then you go to a national championship and you realize, okay, I'm still chasing, you know, Michael would run me down, but we're finishing first and second in our age group in top five overall. Right. And it just, I just kept working hard and improving, and then I won a few races as an age grouper, and the next thing logically is, well, I'll start racing with the professionals. And that's what it was at first. I started racing with the professionals, and I was the guy like 17th or 19th place that you never heard of, and you never looked that far down the list. <laughs> And you just keep working to the same method of you just want to make it closer to the top, closer to the top. And then all of a sudden you look around and you're at a race like this. And, yeah, I'm still going to look up and see, okay, how, where am I compared to everyone else? But to get to where I've been, I just still never expected to get here in right. triathlon. So one of the people that we've been talking about a lot is Sebastian Kinley for his dominance on the bike and a lot of people expect him to ride through and get up to the front of this race you know at least by javi and obviously because of his result last year and some of the stuff he's done he's also going to feature in the overall but another name that came up paula and i were talking about this the other evening and she goes are you guys having andy on i go andy wh wh which andy she goes you know it's a starkey and i'm like oh yeah we got to get this guy on talking about you as one of those guys who like kinley could simply ride his way through this field right to the front of the race. Little pressure with that? Someone who's been watching this race for 30 years and sees everybody coming through all, you know, every year, all year long? It's a triathlon, and I got to make it to the end of the race. So if I go out there and blow myself up on the bike and don't finish it doesn't matter and so i'm gonna go out there and i mean i i i pour my i pour, I, pour, I play my cards early in the race i i swim hard i bike hard i put those cards on the table and i'm sure there's a lot of guys that are that could swim and bike with me but they prefer to wait for the run and mm -hmm. let it play out in the run and maybe a more conservative plan but and, and especially here it's proved to work I mean, very few people have rolled the dice early and made it work. So, but that's that's the way I race. That's the way I like to play. It's 140.6 miles. So, when the gun goes, 
I'm not going to hold anything back until I get to the finish line. And I mean, if the cards run out at mile 140.1, runs out at 140.1. <laughs> but uh, my whole goal this year, is being my first time, is I mean, to make it to the finish line and learn a lot of lessons that I can use for the future. Yeah, but it sounds like you're not holding back, even though it's your first time here, and a lot of people are really conservative. Yeah. I didn't hear a lot of conservatism. Um, in the, I mean, in the, there's, my, my playbook is about that thick. It's like, <laughs> it's like one play. I'm going to swim fast, bike fast, and then hold on. Awesome. Exactly. It's, it. it's what it's been my whole career, and it's, uh, I mean, I failed, I failed, I failed, and finally, when I figured out how to hit it right, I succeeded. And, uh, I, I mean... I've always said you have to be able to be in the race in yeah. order to uh, ever have a shot at winning. And for me, that's I play to my strengths. There's no reason to hide your strengths and try to become a, something that you're not. And I mean, I weigh I outweigh uh, pretty much the whole field. Uh, I think <laughs> Put age together. groupers. I think age groupers come. I think I, I think I outweigh most of the age group field too. It's, yeah. Uh, what do you how much do you weigh? Uh, right now I'm about a little over 185. 185. Nice. That's huddle weight. Race at 185. That's perfect weight. Uh, yeah, huddle Torb is Jorenson top Bali. ten here. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't. Oh, well, come on, you gotta t tell me somebody who won weighing that much. Yeah, or, I guess that's somebody true. Somebody who finished on the podium weighing yeah, that much. Yeah, that's true. You're Dave Scott about, was big in the yeah, early 80s. Yeah, 160. Yeah, that only yeah. weighed really. Yeah. So uh, do you, you start going through the science of it and figuring, okay, what type of lead do I need? Or right, what was the last time you did a race where you weren't first off the bike? I've done a few this year. Really? Yeah, I'm. I got. I think I got spanked pretty badly at uh, Williamsburg at Rev Three Williamsburg this year. Wow. And I got beat up on at Rev Three Wisconsin, and I've. And this year I just haven't. I mean, I've had some great races. Yeah. I've just also had some tough races. When was the last time I? You know, the funny thing is, is both two of the races I've won in the last three years, I've actually lost the lead on the run or on the bike and ended up winning the race. So, I mean, you know, I'm nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's, I mean, everybody views me as just this pure, this pure biker, but, uh, you know, I mean, two of, I think the, my four or five wins in the last two years have come actually from second place on the run at some point. How does it feel to be considered in the same breath with the other top Americans? You know, you got Andy Potts, you got Tim O'Donnell, Jordan Rapp. You're you're one of those guys now. How does that add pressure? Do you even look at that stuff? You just hear going, "This is my first Hawaii." It, I mean, here for here, yeah, it's my yeah. first Hawaii. I'm yeah. gonna, you know, I'm gonna roll the dice and see what happens. But I kind of I kind of chuckle. I mean, you look at that age group that I was talking yeah. about with me, Michael Bamer. You had Jordan Rapp in there. You had Barrett Brandon. You had all these guys that are still around, successful, winning races. Jared was in our age group. Yeah. And you look at this this. This age, if you look, you go back and look at the age group uh, nationals results from like 2002, 2003, 2004 time frame. It's it's the it's the Americans who are defining the sport today. And I mean, I, I never knew Jordan in there because he was always behind me. And now he, he's <laughs> saying that he's going to be ahead of me. I, I got heartburn. <laughs> in heartburn. <laughs> uh, I mean, I haven't I've, I haven't raced uh, Jordan in a while, and yeah. so. He, I know this is definitely his distance. I mean, if we race something shorter, he, you know, he would tell you that he, there's no, he did, it's gonna be have to, he's gonna have to race of his life, and I'm gonna have to have a bad day to beat him. And it's the same way here. I and mean, this is his distance. It's where he races well. Guys like Tim O'Donnell again, he, he's the same way. He's that, he's that same age group that all of us together. We we're all, all we've all been racing each other our whole careers. And uh, I know Tim stepped up to this distance last year and has had a lot of success at it. And uh, so it's his second time here, so he's going to do what I did last year. I'm doing what he did last year. He's, he went out, he raced his heart out. Right. He finished uh, seventh or eighth or whatever yeah. it was, learned a lot of lessons, and he started applying them this year. And, I mean, you saw what he did in Brazil. Right. I mean, that's, what, the fastest or second fastest you American in yeah. history? Yeah. So. What, uh, have you spent much time on this bike course? I rode on it for about two hours uh, the other day. I'm, I'm. No. No? <laughs> I mean... I, I went for a two-hour ride on it. I mean, I, it's been good enough. There's some lava next to you. Yeah. I, hey, I've seen it a lot on NBC. Okay. I mean, I grew up watching, you know, the sure. race on yeah, NBC. Yeah. I could tell you uh, Every about, aspect of it, yeah. I could tell Javi, you a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the legend of Javi, Madame Pele Pele. Yeah. And, you know, everything. Everything about this place, I've, I've all I've learned over the course of history. Where did, where did you ride that two hours? 
What part of the course were you from town out or? That's for me to know. Oh boy, the oh, secrets, the my secrets, God. top secret information right there. I Love am that. enjoying the seat because guy before me, <laughs> yeah, that sat before me, he kept it nice and warm, and hopefully yeah. some of his uh, performance his rubs off on me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pete Jacobs. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Hopefully that rubs hopefully off. Hopefully rubs off and become a good ukulele player. <laughs> <laughs> I was just hoping. I was just hoping maybe to get three or four seconds off my total marathon time. That would be good. <laughs> so, it, being your first time out, what would make you happy? If we were looking at the results on Sunday morning, what would what what type of finish would make you happy? Well, you said the keyword finish, right? Okay. I mean, to make it to the finish line at this place, yeah. especially if I'm going to swim and bike as hard as I do, yeah, and or I want to, right? And just to make it through the whole marathon running, it would be a huge accomplishment. Um, I mean, but what truly makes me happy yeah. is winning. Okay. Do I have? Think I have a shot? I mean. Anybody who's toes the start line's got a shot at winning. Exactly. And as soon as the gun goes off, people's odds go down. And then by the time you get to mile 26 of the run, there's right. usually only one guy who has any odds of winning. But um, I really – my training, I didn't go exactly the way I wanted it to this year. Uh, I was planning on getting the points I needed for Ironman to qualify for this race early in the year, and right. I ended up having to peak for the summer. I had to peak for Muncie and Racine in order to get in. And – Top 40 get in in July 28th cut, and I was number 40. So, I mean, I had to race. I had to be peaked and really race well in order to even be here. And so that really put a dent in my whole base and everything just focusing on this race. And so I've had to take more of a different approach that, hey, this is my first year here. To go into your first year at Kona and think that you're going to walk away and just crush everyone and win the race is just naive. And so I'm just going to, it's a world championship. I'm going to learn. I'm right. going to understand the gods. I'm going to just learn the culture, learn the race, how the race unfolds, and, you know, just apply it to future years. So you've, you've watched this race for a long time, and you've obviously seen other races and done other races. Have you gotten a sense of what makes this place different, a, a little bit different in the short time you've been here so far? You can't hide. Yeah. You can't hide. There's no yeah. shade. Exposure. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it... Literally, you can't hide. You can't hide because you have helicopters over you. You can't hide because it's, it's exposed. There's wind, there's sun, there's all the elements. But the, the best people in the world. The best guys in the world. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. no hiding. There's yeah. Everybody, this is their day. Nobody wants to come. Nobody cares if you win 20, 20 races the whole year and you come to Ironman Hawaii and finish 30th place. No. They, if you, you can finish dead last the whole season and win Ironman Hawaii, you're a world champion forever and people know who you are you're Ironman champ forever right yeah that changes the world so you uh, this is everybody on their best day it is um, the rest of your season is this one of those things that this is the last race of the year or you have more after this normally after August from normally I say my season is August 15th to the end of the year okay and that's like August 15th uh, mid-October and to mid-November and so you don't do a lot during normally this. I race seven times because I'm an Olympic distance and half the guy. Okay. This whole Ironman thing is pretty new to me. So I didn't really race seven times from August 15th to the end of the year. I haven't raced since August 5th. I haven't raced since race since uh, the middle of the summer. And I got, after this race, I race here. And then I'm doing Ironman Florida and Rev 3 Florida. So uh, I got two weeks or three weeks to recover after this before yeah. I go to Ironman Florida and uh, see if I can light that bike course up again. 404. <laughs> That's unbelievable. That see, if unbelievable. I could, see, if, see if I could get uh, the, the, you know, the tailwind the whole 112 miles again. People laugh when I say oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can get a tailwind for 112 miles? I thought I did. Hey. <laughs> but um, I'm going to do, do this race. I mean, this is my biggest race yeah. of the year, right. but it is just another race if you look at the grand scheme of things. It's, it's another opportunity for me to push myself to the limit yeah. and represent what so many people around me invest in me and are in order to just do what I love. I mean, I got support from my family, my wife, uh, all my friends. I mean, you sacrifice so much time where you could be out having a beer with your buddies yeah. or going out to a barbecue and instead you're training. So, yeah, this is my biggest race. But after this race, I'm going to go to Ironman Florida. I'm going to race it just as hard as I'm going to race here. And then I'm going to do the Rev 3 Florida the week after that. And just as I am here, and that's a half. So <laughs> yeah. you can add up the miles. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a lot. Of, it's a lot of racing in a short time. But I mean, that said, I'm coming here pretty fit. So how did you become? Did you know early on that you were going to have great 
skill on the bike? I mean, did you grow up as a bike racer? I grew up riding my bike to my friends' houses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've, I mean, my family is so competitive with each other. Yeah. I mean, that we're we've always been competitive so we're always like you know i'll race you to this i'll race right. you to that and you're we're always biking and just out us outside and yeah. just competitive and i mean did i ever did i ever think no no i mean <laughs> I, I mean like i said i'm just to be sitting here yeah. i'm like i'm tickled it's like wow i'm between two of the legends of the multi-sport where and i'm and, and they want to they want to ask me questions <laughs> i mean it, it's 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 surreal it's surreal well we're, so, we're so, we like the breath of fresh air i, that I you got bring one us. more question yeah, i want to yeah. ask and what, what do you do you have an idea i'm sure you do i mean every athlete does and whether you're willing to reveal it or not um what do you what do you feel like you can swim here and then what do you feel like you're yeah. capable of in terms of a time? And I understand of course you spent well, conditions I can, I can and all swim, that I stuff. I can swim from over there. I'm going to swim around There's a boat, a boat. out here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to turn right, and then I'm going to turn right. I'm going to come back in. I think you have to make a little left. Before yeah. When you run out of water, you get to your boat. What do you think? Yeah. 50? 55? I have no idea. No idea? I have no idea. I mean, have you swam without a wetsuit for 2.4 before? Yes. Okay. Yes. Actually, actually so a couple weeks ago. See, here's the funny thing. Here's the funny thing. And you got, you'll understand this, mm -hmm. right? Now, you ride 112 miles. Mm. You're absolutely exhausted, right? You're, you're like... I feel pretty good, really. Yeah. After 112? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's yeah, lying. It's just, it's just a warm-up. last time he rode 112 miles you in 1987. You rode 26.2 miles. It's like, geez, I'm not going to go another step. Right. I mean, you, you, as a, you go, I mean, I hang out with my buddy, John, who's an open water swimmer. We swam 2.4 miles across the lake to a waterfall. Went, hung out the waterfall for two or three minutes, had a little water, had a goo. Swam back 2.4 miles. It's like swimming like five, six miles to a swimmer. It's like yeah. 2.4 miles. It's like a Not breath a of fresh deal. air. It's yeah. chopped liver. It's like a breath of it's fresh a air. It's a cocktail yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, it's going to be fast here. But, it's, but I, I think just, you know, for the future, when they, when they recreate Iron Man again, they need to make the swim 4.8 miles. And like the bike, the bike 112 and the run of a half marathon. Or 10K. Yeah, 10K. O 10K Oxford Equilateral Triathlon is what that? this guy's yeah. talking about. I know, yeah. you're right. Okay. You're right. Okay. Yeah. Where's that? Is that England? Uh, that's old days. That's, it's old that's, days. That's, that's, that's when they tried to they, equalize they tried all the to equalize it out, yeah. 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 Hey, Andrew, so, thank you so much yeah, for taking for time with us. By. We're uh, excited to watch you come off the bike first. I would, that'd be awesome if that could happen. It'd be we'll really see. fun to see. It'd really we'll be fun to see. Never know. Again, our guest has been Andrew Starkowitz. We are brought to you by Monster Eye Sport, the athlete's headphones. We're a beautiful Huggos. We're live on triathlete.com. And the amazing Poncho Man is about to take oh, us yeah. out. <laughs> Time goes on. Long after the trip, living is gone. Little ditty about Jack and Diane. Breakfast with Bob and Paul. <laughs> Thank you, the amazing Pacho Man.